Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie. I'm a book-loving, notebook hoarding, literacy teacher educator on a mission to change lives one book and one notebook at a time. And this is the Get Literate Podcast, a podcast where we explore the power of reading and writing to cultivate a life we love. Each week, I offer a bit of bibliotherapy and share three books you need to know about on a bookish theme to fuel our reading hearts and help us grow through what we go through. But that's not all. I also invite you to extend those bookish themes into your own life through notebooking, lifelong learning, and creativity to experience the life-changing magic of reading in our lives. And the best part? Each episode is only 20 minutes or less, so you can spend less time listening and more time reading. Now, on to today's episode. Hey everyone, Stephanie here with the 10th episode of the Get Literate podcast. Today we are talking all things beach reads. If you are listening to this in real time when the episode originally aired, then it is mid-August. And that means I have been frantically trying to finish the beach reads on my TBR stack, as well as a few more that I have just added, as you'll see from today's episode. So just a couple of days ago, I finally finished Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I had been waiting for this book for a while. It finally came in on my library holds list and I eagerly dove in. I finished it in two days, ignored the dishes, ignored the laundry, stayed up a little bit too late and got the book done. Now, honestly, when I closed that last page, I jumped up from the couch, I did a little squeal, and was just so excited for this book. I put a call out into the world for Emily Henry to write another book immediately. I adored this book. It had everything for me that I look for in a beach read. First, it took place over the summer in a very idyllic location. It had a wonderful mix of rom-com plus family drama and what enveloped all of it but books and the book industry. It was perfect. I immediately went to Emily Henry's site so that I could devour all other things Emily Henry. I needed another book with that beautiful banter and that lightness yet with a serious theme running through it. When I got to her website, I was shocked to discover books of hers that I had not heard of. Of course, I knew about beach reads. I've already read People That We Meet on Vacation, but I didn't know about Hello Girls or When the Sky Fell on Splendor. I didn't know about A Million Junes, and I didn't know about The Love That Split the World. There were so many backlist books that I was not aware of that now I cannot wait to read. And it got me thinking, what other books are out there that I haven't read yet that I need to know about? Where are these backlist books that need to come to the forefront? You know, our reading lives come and go. They ebb and flow depending on the season of life we're in. Right now, I get to read a great deal because my children are older We're not running around to as many travel sports teams as we were, and I've got a little bit of extra time. Back in the day, when they were little, three kids under three, I could never find time to read a book. I would look at them longingly on the bookshelf, but that's where they'd stay. Slowly, I got back into my reading life and now have a robust reading and writing life that I love. But during those times where I wasn't reading as much as I'd like, I know there are books that I missed. I know there are books somewhere in all of those backlists that are waiting for me. And that's what today's episode is about. I loved Book Lovers as a Beach Reads so much that I wanted to do a little bit of investigating to find additional Beach Reads on authors' backlists that I had missed that now I could give attention to. So I did a little searching. I did a lot of eavesdropping on Facebook groups. I tapped into the emails from publishers and just went to Google. 
best backlist beach reads. As I sorted through all the titles, I decided on three that I wanted to share with you today that I have added to my TBR list as a challenge to finish before summer ends. So here are those three. The first one is one that I'm kind of surprised I added to my list, but I need to. This is The Prodigal Summer by Barbara Kingsolver. Now, I have a secret. I read the Poisonwood Bible, and I know that others loved it, but I did not. I did not love it. It was hard for me to get through. And I think part of it was because I was reading it with my then ninth grader who was required to read it for summer reading and did not want to, that it made the book harder to get through. But I thought, why not give this author a second chance? Why not give me a second chance reading it in a different frame of mind and see if perhaps Barbara Kingsolver can also be one of my favorite authors too. So here's what Goodreads has to say about Prodigal Summer. Prodigal Summer weaves together three stories of human love within a larger tapestry of lives, inhabiting the forested mountains and struggling small farms of Southern Appalachia. From her outpost in an isolated mountain cabin, <clears throat> Deanna Wolf, a reclusive wildlife biologist, watches a den of coyotes that have recently migrated into the region. She is caught off guard by a young hunter who invades her most private spaces and confounds her self-assured solitary life. On a farm several miles down the mountain, Lusa Maluf Landowski, a bookish city girl turned farmer's wife, finds herself unexpectedly marooned in a strange place where she must declare or lose her attachment to the land that has become her own. And a few more miles, <clears throat> excuse me, down the road, a pair of elderly feuding neighbors tend their respective farms and wrangle about God, pesticides, and the possibilities of a future neither of them expected. Over the course of one humid summer, these characters find their connections to one another and to the flora and fauna with whom they share a place. Prodigal Summer demonstrates a balance of narrative, drama, and ideas that is characteristic of Barbara Kingsolver's finest work. Now, I know, I know this doesn't sound like a typical beet tree, does it? It's not a rom-com, it doesn't have a sense of lightness to it, but what I love in a beet tree is that it is set over the summer that really defines a beach read for me. And when I'm reading books, I really love family dramas. I really love the dramatic themes that run through them. And I especially love books where the characters come together with very unique connections. So that's why this book fits the bill for me. I need a second chance with this author. It takes place over the summer. It has all of these wonderful connections that I think are going to happen. And quite honestly, I love to read about books in this setting. I finished reading, oh gosh, the title's escaping me now, uh, but The Book Woman, actually, The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. And I thought, let's go back to that setting and dig in for another summer read. So that's first up on my TBR for Backlist Beach Reads, Prodigal Summer by Barbara Kingsolver. Now up next is The Summer House by Hannah McKinnon. The Summer House is a book. It got four stars on Goodreads and it does seem to fit all of the boxes too. I mean, summer is in the title. Summer House means we're going to have some sort of summer adventures. And I know that this one has a bit of family drama too. So here's what Goodreads has to say. When Flossie Merrill summons her children to the beloved family beach house to celebrate their father's 80th birthday, both cherished memories and long kept secrets come to light in this charming and lyrical novel from the author of The Lake Season and Mystic Summer. Flossie Merrill has managed to somewhat begrudgingly, gather her three ungrateful grown children from their dysfunctional lives for a summer reunion at the family's Rhode Island beach house. 
Clementine, her youngest child and a mother of two small children, has caused Flossie the most worry after enduring a tragically life-altering year. But Samuel and his partner Evan are not far behind in their ability to alarm. The prospective adoption search has just taken a heart-wrenching turn. Only Paige, the eldest of the headstrong Merrill clan, is her usual self, arriving precisely on time with her well-adapted teens. Little does her family know that she too is facing personal struggles of her own. No matter, with her family finally congregated under one seaside roof, Flossie is determined to steer her family back on course even as she prepares to reveal the fate of the summer house that everyone has thus far taken for granted. She's selling it. The Merrill children are both shocked and outraged and each returns to memories of their childhood at their once beloved summer house, the house where they have not only grown up, but from which they have grown away. With each loss in their respective heartaches, Clementine, Samuel, and Paige will be forced to reconsider what really matters before they all say goodbye to a house that not only defined their summers, but ultimately the ways in which they define themselves. Oh my goodness, whoever wrote this Goodreads summary has my heart. This is it for me in terms of a beach read. It's in the summer. It's in a summer house. It's in a summer destination that I can picture. I've been to Rhode Island and it has all the family drama that I love to read about in a book. And it seems like it's a book that's going to take all the characters full circle, which is one of the ways that I love to end a book. It's so satisfying to me to see how everything comes together at the end. So that is The Summer House. In terms of a backlist, it's not too far. It's a 2017 book where Barbara King Solver was published back in 2000 but it's still considered a backlist beach read for me. Now up last, last but not least, is The Vacationers by Emma Straub. This book was published in 2014. And on Goodreads, honestly, it only is averaging about three stars. But I love this author. <clears throat> I loved the cover and I loved the quick blurb on Goodreads. So I'm going to give it a try. Here it is. For the posts, a two-week trip to the Balearic Island of Malacor with their extended family and friends is a celebration. Franny and Jim are observing their 35th wedding anniversary and their daughter Sylvia has graduated from high school. The sunlit island, its mountains and beaches, its tapas and tennis courts, and also promise an escape from the tensions simmering at home in Manhattan. <clears throat> but all does not go according to plan. Over the course of the vacation, secrets come to light, old and new humiliations are experienced, childhood rivalries resurface, and ancient wounds are exacerbated. So here we've got a book, we've got a summer vacation, but I love this because we're also taking a trip abroad. You know, I love traveling through my books, Reading One Italian Summer just completely got me hooked in that kind of genre. So knowing that this is a summer beach read that is taking place in a location that I have yet to experience immediately hooked me in, as did, as you know, this family drama and all of these connections between characters and learning and unlearning and coming to terms with what seems to be some family drama and some coming of age kinds of themes. So it may have only gotten three reads on Goodreads, but I am up to give it a try. Now, I am someone who tends to give out lots of five-star reads. I have a real problem with the book rating system because I write books based on how I feel. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a result of the writing, right? Just because I felt a strong reaction one way, which made it a four, doesn't mean that the writing was any different than someone who gave it a five. So I struggle with these stars, which is why a three-star rating on Goodreads is not bothering me in the least. So there you have it. The three books now added to my summer TBR. I've got to get going. We've got Prodigal Summer by Barbara Kingsolver, 
We have Summer House by Hannah McKinnon, and we have The Vacationers by Emma Straub. So how do I want you to bring this into your life? What's our bookish lesson for the week? Well, of course, I want you to dig into your own backlists. Think about your favorite authors that you love. Head online, visit their websites, and see if there's a book that you have yet to discover that could delight you as you finish your TBR list. Or maybe you just head to Google, backlist beach reads. Favorite backlist historical fiction. You might be surprised at the books that come up. There are too many books to read in a lifetime, but using backlist books can not only help bring delight to our reading lives in a new way, but it can also support the author whose book's time may have come and gone, but who is still there for us to enjoy. So that's it for me. You know that I would love to hear what your favorite backlist books are, whether they're backlist beach reads or not. So send me a message on the show notes at alitlife.com or find me on your favorite social media platform at Affinito Lit. I'd love to know what you're reading on your backlist and maybe I'll add it to my backlist TBR too. Thanks for listening. Have a great rest of the week and happy reading. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Get Literate podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes and at www.alitlife.com. You'll also find additional inspiration for your reading and writing life there, like book lists, notebooking ideas, personalized book recommendations, and an invitation to join my Get Literate members community. Each month, we take a deep dive into one bookish theme and work to bring it to life in our own lives. You'll get a monthly bibliotherapy book calendar with a book recommendation for every day of the month, bonus episodes, live book club sessions, and much more. Learn more at www.getliterate.co.